The only place in the multiverse where you can love the book, hate the movie, but still buy all the toys. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi mask. A what? Please remember to hold on to your butts and get ready to get stressed. With your hosts, Craig Goldberg, Abigail Gardner, and Jacob Walsh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Patreon bonus episode for the beginning of April 2020. Welcome to Yes Have Some Podcast, and also welcome to all of our people tuning in for the very first time, because Yes Have Some Podcast Patreon feed is absolutely free for the entire month of April. So this could be the beginning of a long and beautiful relationship. Yeah. (laughs) Craig, you pointed out before we started recording that we've got a kind of hit both of us that a lot of people are going to be listening to listening to these episodes well, now a little so. bit maybe a little bit more than yeah but more than so normal let's bring it let's bring the noise we're gonna bring it tonight all right jake do you want to bring it uh we can bring it we can bring a little like, bit bring it on. we'll see how it goes we're gonna bring a little bit cool cool, cool. yeah well uh, welcome everybody we're gonna get right into it uh nope no BS here on the Patreon. No bullshit. <laughs> nah, dude. No, we get down to brass tacks. Yeah, yeah. Cut the fat. For 10 minutes, we're going to talk about the brass tacks. Yeah, we're going to do <laughs> metaphors for 10 minutes and break those down. No, um, we're... Now, I mean, what, now, what year did the brass tacks, uh, you know, what year was that implemented? Oh, it was, brass tax. It was before the... I 19, think it was Back to the Future 3. Yes, <laughs> it was 1885. <laughs> Marty! Me falling in love and romantic involvement here in 1885. Doc, it just hits you. It's not science. Anyways, here we go. Oh, cool. Quarantine's really getting to me. Yeah, have you gotten all the volume? I don't know. You're going to keep no, we're doing changing it? Gonna keep, You're doing like gonna keep tweaking. Like it's a spaceship? Listen, we're going to be talking about evolution. 2001, Ivan Reitman directed this movie. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's not a movie I've seen many times. In fact, as I watched it, getting prepared for this episode, there's a chance I've never actually sat down and watched it all the way through until. No. Yeah. Like, oh, wait, you're right. Cause I remember the first time I watched it was back at our old house before this one. And I saw it all by myself. I don't think you were there for that viewing. So I wasn't there. No, I was messaging Jake. I was like, dude, is this ghostbusters? 3? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get into that. Uh, Jake, what, uh, what's your personal history with evolution? Were you into it when um, it first I, came out? I mean, I remember seeing it, um, uh, probably pretty close to when it came out. And I remember liking it at the time. I, I've seen it a few times, but um, I rewatched it last week and, and I was like, Oh, a lot of this doesn't hold up at all. No, it's uh, weird. Yeah. It's definitely trapped in 2001. I think uh, right. anytime Stifler's involved. Yeah. You got Stifler. It's very pre nine yeah. 11, non PC uh, kind of pushing the limits. Some very <laughs> questionable, like creepiness happening oh here and there. Oh my God. Yes. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. We made some notes on that, both Craig and I, um, there's no like relatable straight man that is like, has good character in this movie. Like, like most everyone's kind of creepy. Yeah. We're well, it's weird. That. It's weird because there's like, it feels like there's three or four different characters that are kind of supposed to be the straight man. Mm-hmm. Right. But they all, it's just weird. Yeah. It's weird. We're going to get into it. And it's, you know, there are obvious comparisons to Ghostbusters and we'll, we'll talk about that um, in depth here. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Ivan Reitman. So in 81, he, we got Stripes, 84 Ghostbusters, Legal Eagles, Twins, GB2, 1990, we have Kindergarten Cop. So that's like a a pretty strong run for Ivan Reitman uh, in the 80s. 90s, it's a little bit more sporadic. He's not directing as much. 1993, he does the movie Dave. I don't know if I've ever seen Dave. No. Kevin Klein, is he in that? Uh, Junior, 1994, which I haven't seen since 1994, but I have another feeling uh, that might not hold up as well either. Uh, (laughs) Is that the one where Arnold Schwarzenegger gets pregnant? It is. Okay, so... Um, Add that to the list of future bonus episodes. By the way, if you're stuck in quarantine, which I know you are, these Arnold Schwarzenegger's little videos he's been posting are very funny. Yeah. He has like a goat and a miniature horse that lives in his house with him. Yeah. Have you seen these, Jake? I've seen one of them, yeah. He's like, you have some salad. (laughs) It's pretty funny. Yes, I saw that one. I liked it. Um, 
1997, he does the movie Father's Day with Robin Williams and Billy Crystal, which on paper sounds good, but <laughs> I don't see a whole lot of Father's Day cosplays <laughs> yeah. at Dragon Con. No, not a lot of Father's Day merchandise on eBay when we go on our um, And then Six Days, hangs. Seven Nights, which is the Harrison Ford movie, and then Evolution in 2001. So it, it, it kind of seems like just on paper, Evolution was like kind of maybe him going back to a more straightforward ensemble comedy and Jake I don't know I sent you this interview with Ivan Reitman that he did on set for Evolution yeah and they talk specifically about how this is in the vein of Ghostbusters in that interview yeah which is weird because it's like uh I also read the trivia and in the trivia it's like said that when you know this was written it was a much more serious movie right but then Mm -hmm. they kind of came in and they made it a little uh you know a little sillier but yeah he talks about ghostbusters a few times and he mentions how different uh the effects are from you know like uh what's like progressed and how effects were like when they made ghostbusters is is compared to evolution yeah it's really an evolution of the visual effects industry (laughs) if you think about it um most of the vfx in this movie really don't hold up it's just that period of time like the practical effects inside the cave where the evolution is taking yeah, place. Yeah, the, pra- the fucking practical cool. creatures look pretty cool. Yeah. Everything else is like, you know, standard CGI for that time. Yeah. So like plot wise, it's very similar to Ghostbusters. Tone wise, I think it's got some Ghostbusters, but also it, there's a lot of men in black in mm-hmm. there too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a little sillier, I think. And I it's agree. funny because in that interview, Ivan Reitman. So let's talk about the cast a little bit. David Duchovny, Orlando Jones, <laughs> Sean William Scott, Julianne Moore. That's kind of your core team there. And it's yeah, a, that's your, Hey, that's your three scientists. And then a random person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then a, a wannabe fireman. Yeah. Whose storyline gets wrapped up at the end of the movie and nobody cares at that point. <laughs> yes. I want every movie to end with Dan Aykroyd coming up to one of the dumb characters. Be like, by the way, you're approved to be a fireman. You're a talk, fire- <laughs> talk to the fire marshal. <laughs> Abby was like, Oh good. I was worried. Yeah. That's another <laughs> plot point I didn't care about getting wrapped up. Um, so it's definitely the underdog misfits like group, uh, kind of like working against the government. That vibe's going on. Well, yeah, I mean Ivan Reitman, he he's always he does that going against the grain, anti-authority thing. He loves that, whether it's stripes or meatballs or uh, Ghostbusters or Evolution. I mean, it is about those these scientists at a community college who make a discovery. And the weird thing, though, is like the plot, it kind of like it. This movie does not flow like Ghostbusters flows. Like it feels like this movie kind of is stands still for like an hour and then things kind of pick up because really it's more about. I feel like ghosts are a little bit more interesting than these aliens because with ghosts it's like everybody knows what a ghost is right somebody dies you become a ghost and then you could do a bunch of like faux technical babble that sounds cool but is also funny but this is like even in that interview with ivan reitman he's like well it's a movie this asteroid hits and there's these single-celled organisms and it's just like anytime you're in the lab in this (laughs) movie things slow down yeah it kind of slows the pace down in the immediacy of everything and i agree i think the third act is actually pretty decent like once we're all moving along and you know that like fire or whatever is going to make things much worse and once you're like caught up in the big the scene kind of starts to unfold there um it gets better, but anything in the middle where they're just going back into the lab is very boring. Yeah. I, I did not know any of the characters names at the end of this movie. So Ira, <laughs> Ira. I know Ira. Is and, that David Duchovny? Yeah, that's David Duchovny. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the cast. David Duchovny, um, obviously X files fame. I'm not a huge X files fan. Ivan Reitman is quoted as saying he, he always thought that David Duchovny would make a great leading man in a comedy. Uh, Jake, what, what are your impressions of, uh, What's his Ira Kane? What do you what do you think of David I, Duchovny? In this I mean, movie? I like David Duchovny, and I think he's pretty funny. Like that that quote from Ivan Reitman, where he says that he's got kind of like a weird funniness to him. I, I agree with that. I've always liked David Duchovny, and um, I mean, he he is great in X Files. Uh, but yeah, I mean, every, I I feel like everybody in this movie is fine, fine. except <laughs> maybe except for. Uh, uh, what's her name? She's she's pretty bad. Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. Jill, Julianne Moore. I thought was pretty awful. I think she's Orlando very, Jones very, is more offensive. 
Really? I don't think he lands a lot of his jokes, and I there were just a lot of moments that I was like, ugh. There's that okay. scene. So there's that scene where, like, oh, I try to go into this movie where I'm like, don't compare it to Ghostbusters. It's not fair. But then, like, early on, it's like, here's the scientist hitting on the student and, like, getting caught by yeah. the other scientist. Yeah. Jennifer the Rundin character, basically. Yeah, like, Hey, you're like, hey, don't don't compare it to Ghostbusters. But then all of a sudden, <laughs> half of your main cast are wearing headlamps and Dude. covered in slime. <laughs> yeah. Dude, <laughs> yes. Um, and it's funny because a lot of people use shampoo for their slime at conventions. And in this movie, <laughs> the slime is actually head and shoulders. It's canon. Mm-hmm. It's canon. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay. David Duchovny is pretty good in this movie, but it's kind of weird. He's the least offensive. If we're doing that scale that we made from um, our Tiger King episode with like septic to saint, he's pretty good. Oh, septic to saint. Yeah. Now, do you know the rules yet? Uh, what is saint? Ten is septic. It was five, but okay. I thought it was ten. I, I, I think, think it was. was 10. I wrote. I wrote it down. Hold on. No, it was Carol fucking Bass. One is saint. Ten is septic. That's okay. what I have written down. Um. um I think he's a saint. He's the closest to. I think he's the best character in the movie. He's a saint, but he does. Like, there's this. I don't want to skip too far ahead, but I will because there's this part near. It doesn't the, matter. There, <laughs> there's this part near the end where, like, him and Julianne Moore are kind of flirting the whole movie. The only thing I could say about her character is that she's really klutzy. Like, that's like her thing. She falls over. But it's the but same. It's, are you about to say answer the call? Well, no. I was just gonna say it's like a really bad. Her whole klutz thing. It's like a. It, it feels like. She didn't know how to be funny. So she's like, oh, what if I can't stand up straight? What if I keep falling? That's funny, right? And it's not funny. Well, the no. thing is, Julia Moore is like the she's. It's like Aaron Gilbert's bad sense of style and answer the call. Like, yeah. no, it doesn't add to the character. It's not funny. It's not really backed up or explained. Hey, are you need to back it off? You need to calm down. Sorry. Julia Moore's an incredible actress. She's de- she's the most talented actress or actor in this movie. Um my number one all time crush in the nineties yeah. was Julianne Moore. I think I don't think she's that great, but I think no, that you have your no reason understand. for thinking she is is she was your number when one you crush. Go from Boogie Nights and The Lost World, and then Silence of the Lambs sequel Hannibal, where I was like, yeah, like that movie sucks, but you know, <laughs> Julianne Moore is awesome. Yeah. By the way, there's a lot of Silence of the Lambs characters. I feel like in this movie. In this movie. How- I, I I wonder if we took a poll of how any how many other people like on the entire planet have ever said Julianne Moore is awesome. You don't like her? No, I don't. I don't think she's very good. Damn. I don't dislike her. I I definitely like her in Boogie Nights. Um, I have a fondness for The Lost World. I wouldn't say that she's like fantastic. Um, well, she really screwed over Jeff Goldblum in that movie. Yeah, I'm trying to she think did. in like right the, behind his back in the females Sarah, of the Jurassic Park world. Sarah Harding. She probably is below Claire Deering. Um, and uh, Ooh, fucking who? I'm trying to rank her in the list of females in the Jurassic Park world. Oh, Ellie that, That's a different episode. Okay, we'll do that, that later. That we'll get in trouble for. Ranking the women of Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like, <laughs> Wait, it's not that just actually based sounds on, fun. Yeah, I know, it is fun. <laughs> number 10. Coming in at number one. Number one would be Rexy. You think so? Yeah. Oh, we should really do this for our next bonus. Oh, we do the top 10 I'm females of Jurassic down. Park, but yeah. it's just they're all they're done. All, they're, they're all done. done. It's Jake's all dinosaurs and Laura Dude, Dern. I'm still writing that idea down. Okay. Okay, cool. So there's this part, David Duchovny and Julianne Moore are like flirting this whole movie. And in fact, during the award ceremony at the end, this would basically be like if there was a scene at the end of Ghostbusters 2 where they're at the Statue of Liberty getting their like award by the city. Mm -hmm. If before they got to Peter, he looked to Dana Barrett was like, hey, we should go have sex in the Ecto-1. Oh my God. Instead of getting our award. Yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. But there's this part where she goes... You know, I would have rocked your world. And he goes, David Duchovny goes, you already have. And it's like the way they do it. I was like, oh, is this that they thought I would write. They thought that that was the equivalent to like <laughs> Carrie Fisher and uh, Harrison Ford. Like, I love you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like they thought like, they're like this is this. We're going to put this one on a T-shirt. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like it just doesn't. It kind of just doesn't work. a fire truck. It's not. It's. <laughs> It's not the greatest. Uh, but that you can sounds tell like a Joe Exotic of, song, Sex yeah, in a Fire Truck. That, I mean, it doesn't sound terrible, uh, but it's definitely like built up to be a lot cooler of a moment than it ever is. And there's a lot of moments like that, I think, in the movie. Um, yeah. 
So apparently this movie, Jake, you mentioned it earlier. We, we, we pulled some trivia off of IMDb. And the fun thing about that trivia is that I'm guarantee half of it's not real. Um, but some of it's probably real. One of the things you read about in this movie is that, uh, it was originally written as kind of like a hard sci-fi, like maybe something, cause there's definitely some like tremors vibes in here. Um, but I think there's Trem- also, there's also a scene where the whole movie is pretty silly, even when they're dealing. So like there are a couple of deaths in this movie, people straight up get killed by these things. Right. Mm-hmm. But then there's a scene maybe like <clears throat> three quarters of the way through when they, when they figure out that there's like apes, there's like primates. Oh yeah. 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 Where it becomes a horror movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. And those apes like jump out of the thing and they're like trying to kill everybody and they're like smashing people. And I'm like, whoa, that that's a different tone. Yeah. Than the I was like, is that Jake's Congo shelf <laughs> coming to life? <laughs> they kind of look like falling over. That's the what one happens. purple one with the fucking tail. That, Ooh. You know. Hey, like, you know what? That one purple one with the tail is the only one that stays standing up. All the rest oh, keep falling it? over. Okay. Um, well, that's because of evolution. So. Uh, we'll we'll kind of interject some of this trivia as we go. This one was a personal favorite. Uh, according to IMDb, during the lengthy shooting in Page, Arizona, Dan Aykroyd entertained the local folk by carting guests at a bar, unofficially greeting people at a Walmart, and visiting oh locals God. for a cup of coffee in their homes. Now, all of that sounds like Bill Murray territory to me. That does they not just showed yeah. up at people's houses. Wait, we're bypassing the fact that he was a voluntary Walmart greeter. That's as noble as a volunteer firefighter. That's it. Or I, <laughs> I love that. There's also a couple moments of stolen valor in this movie. Yeah. Where they dress up like uh, um, <laughs> officers of some sort, an army man. And Jake, I know you like those videos. Uh, there right. is, Welcome there to Walmart, is, but they folks. They did it for a reason. Yeah. Welcome to Walmart, mm-hmm. folks. We're going to be getting you back here during the quarantine only 10 at a time, okay? All right. Here we go. <laughs> uh, this was not during a quarantine. Um. <coughs> Ivan Reitman apparently rewrote this script. <laughs> Duh. And uh, there's a there's an anecdote when he rewrote it and he said he wanted it to be 20 to 30 percent more like of a of a cheese factor. And, and somebody was like, oh, so like Ghostbusters. Mm. <laughs> so like add 10 or 15 more butt jokes and uh, there's like butthole jokes. It's weird because like there's a lot of butthole jokes. There's a lot yeah. of butthole there's, jokes. There's How like do you know that's an alien's butthole though? It's not an alien. But – I thought about that. It just looks like a butthole. You're assuming it's butthole? Okay. Well, you know it's a butthole because yeah. Dan Aykroyd... I'd like ge- to run some tests. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Aykroyd delivers his version of the uh, looks like a giant jello mold. And mm-hmm. he looks at it and he goes, they're about to give it a giant enema or whatever he Head says. So enemy. stupid. But also, why wasn't Dan Aykroyd just on the team in this movie? Why? <laughs> yeah, why wasn't he David Duchovny? I'd be okay with that. It was pro. I don't know. I, I was gonna say it was probably one of those things where he was like, "Yeah, I'll, like Ivan probably was like, hey, will you be in this?'" And he was probably like, "Yeah, I'll come do a day on it." But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, Dan Aykroyd's not like, no, he's not doing anything. He's yeah. probably like, he's like, wow, well, I'm I'm already going to Arizona to be a lieutenant governor volunteer for the uh, local fire department. So yeah, I'll just do the movie, <laughs> just make it stuff up. Um, so the opening of this movie really feels a lot like. Armageddon deep impact like opens on a field and you see an asteroid coming in and it's just like, Mm -hmm. it's just that time frame where like asteroids were all the rage in the late nineties, early 2000s. Alien culture, like area 54 and all that kind of stuff. That's not, no, I'm going to to call (laughs) you out on that one. Why? Okay. Area 51. 54. Did I, (laughs) damn it. Fuck. (laughs) That's a, that's a, I'm sure I'm not the first person to do that. Well, you know, like the club culture. Studio 54. Studio 54. Um, God damn it. Jake, let me ask you this. Two okay. thou- 2001 Sean William Scott. Was he the next Bill Murray? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody ever think that? I probably did at one point. Um, he's, I think he's tolerable in this movie because he's just, he's kind of there and kind of in the background a lot of the times, but he's not a very, he's, he's a pretty annoying actor to have to watch i think he's not bad in this yeah he's surprisingly like more tolerable i think in this movie um yeah but in in the beginning i think he's almost funnier as the movie wears on and kind of wears on you he gets less funny but in the beginning he's like when he's driving his car that he has like a a, he has to close the door with like a piece of string i related to that i thought that was funny funny. no i got it (laughs) that scene was funny you know it's interesting because if you think about ghostbusters the humor 
is sometimes it's like cle- sophomore, but it's always clever and like it's that kind of that old school SNL like mix of highbrow and yeah, it's like Harold Ramis, like yeah. that. You know, it appeals to the masses, but it's also got very highbrow elements that like yeah. super intellectual people will. And appreciate. I just wonder, I wonder if it was hard to adapt, like in a world where like American Pie was the biggest movie, like. If there was pressure, like, well, you just got to have, like, raunchy sex jokes. That's what people want. Because most of them fall really flat. Like the yeah. beginning with, like, the the girl that needs her grades up or whatever. That stuff's just kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> there's and, also, like, there's also that scene where they're, uh, where they steal the suits and they go down into the, the meteor. And there's just, like, an entire weird, awkward conversation that they're having about Julianne Moore's yeah. character. Yeah. I was like, ooh, this is not good. Yeah, all of that made me uncomfortable. Um, I did notice whenever they're having that scene in the beginning where they're talking to the uh, uh, the girls trying to get her grades up, mm-hmm. um, there is a poster on the wall. You can see it when he walks in, and it's got dinosaurs on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like two really long posters kind of on top of each other. Um, I own that poster, oh, and it came what? from – it came from the Peabody Museum in uh, Connecticut. That's uh, it's a poster of their dinosaur mural at that museum. Dude. And I was like, hey, that's from that's from that specific place. Everything Fuck. Jake just said is more interesting than the first half hour of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, cool, though, Jake. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Hey, do you guys ever like um, do you ever have like a can of soda or something around? And then like maybe you. uh you don't throw it away right away. You got it on your table or something. Then you like maybe something you, you find like a piece of trash or something and you just like kind of put it in the, in the can. Yes. Yeah. Um, I literally just spit soda all over the place oh. because I thought that I, I thought this was a can that, had soda trash in it. that was drinkable. And I Dude. picked it up. Oh, I remember and having roommates, something went in my mouth and I don't know some sort of food particles yeah. or something that I put in there. Well, and at least I just it's not like, a cigarette. I was going to say, I, opened, used, I had roommates who would use empty cans as ashtrays and that's yeah, a fucking shock. I just shock. opened my mouth and, uh, I'm now sort of covered in root beer. All right. Hey, A and W. that's a place to be. There you yeah. Go. It is A and W. Yeah. I, I thought, Good I stuff. thought Jake was going into an ad read that I didn't know about. <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> you evolution. Know you, you want yeah, a kid. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, folks, listen, in this troubling times during the quarantine, I think, uh, no, 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 uh, I'm sorry. Do you need to clean up or are you good? Uh, Do you have any head and shoulders <laughs> to wash up? You guys talk. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. You can keep going. You can keep going. Jake's oh, going to take going. care of his root beer All accident. Right, I'll be back. That's a I'm going to cause a root beer accident. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. Um, okay. Let's, uh, Let's talk a little bit, Abby, about yeah. Donkey Lips. He's in this movie. Oh, yeah, he is. Were you a fan of, uh, what's that show called? Salute Your Shorts? Yeah, were you a fan of that show? Yeah, I remember that uh, my parents told me I wasn't allowed to watch it, but I would sneak watching it, so it made it like that much better for me. Um, I liked Donkey Lips. I thought it was a funny show, and seeing him... Um, in this movie, he doesn't really add a lot. I wouldn't say uh, <laughs> yeah. it's like him I, and the guy from Varsity Blues. I was Varsity wondering Blues. where you were going with this. Like, I was like, are you gonna? Yeah, like try Donkey to Lips like spin was, this. Like, this is a, a it, really important he's thing. Always, donkey Lips has been a huge figure in my life. Uh, <laughs> some people would call me a donkey head. Uh, no, I'm not saying any of that. He doesn't really add anything, and I can. It's him and um, the other guy. I don't know his name, but he was in Varsity Blues. Ethan Supley. Yes, the most interesting thing about him is that he looks fantastic now. He, I like that guy. He, yeah, he shows up in a lot of movies. He's good in Mallrats. He's good. Uh, yeah, he's in Mallrats. Remember the Titans? Remember, ooh, that was filmed at my high school. There you go. Fun you fact. Go. Mm-hmm. Um, Not my home school, but high school. <laughs> Remember the Titans was filmed at my home my school. Backyard. Um. So while we wait for Jake to get back, I'm going to go back to the IMDb fun facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jake, you there? Yep, I'm here. Cool. We were talking about donkey lips while you were gone. Who? The guy from Salute Your Shorts who's the, the... you know, oh, I never watched that. Well, the the two dudes in this movie, like Camp on a the guys, like, the 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 shampoo guys. Yeah, there's shampoo. Yeah, the the sh- guy from uh, the, the guys, guys that are pouring beer on themselves without their shirts on at one point, and then yeah, for yeah. no reason. Yeah. Anyways, the dumb guys that also save the day. Um, here we go. Uh, here's a fun fact. 
The reference to selenium is also made in Ivan Reitman's Ghostbusters as Ray explains the specifics of Dana's building. <laughs> Dude, selenium's Weird. big in the Reitman household. Dude. I bet Jason they, Reitman used to have to brush his you, teeth with hey, selenium. Hey, can't you tell from Jason Reitman's hair? Ooh. Whoa, no flakes. He is sharp. He's a sharp dressed <laughs> man. That's for sure. Um, he had just gotten a haircut before FanFest. Um <laughs> That's a little too much detail to Let's know. Let's talk about Ted Levine. Yeah. He's the kind of the asshole head of the military. And yeah. um, he's Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. this guy. Every time I see he's, him, I'm like, I like this great. guy. Yeah, he's good. He's good in this. He's a good um, actor. Good presence. He's good at like, he he's very good at being a jerk in this movie. Yeah. Um. It says David Duchovny passed on a role in episode two attack of the clones to do this movie. Whoa. <laughs> I'm trying to think what role it would have been. Also, that seems ridiculous. Who would like, that seems ridiculous. Who would Who, pass? A, yeah. I don't know. David Duchovny sounds Wars like one role. of those guys. Like he, he did like, he's never seen star Wars. He's like, yeah, I don't know. It's not my thing, you know? Uh, yeah, but that's so dumb. Like literally. Oh passes. yeah, because Attack of the Clones really well, set the world on fire. No, because you get that residual money, dude, and like whatever you the fuck else. Yeah, you get in checks? that family. No, you, there yeah, are listen, no evolution checks. You wouldn't. This is the only. There's enough Star Wars out there that you wouldn't be like, you know, no, I'm not going to be in that. You, you want to be like, part of that so, canon. Even even if Episode One was awful, which you know it was, there were still. Hey. Three of the greatest movies ever made, backing it up. Yeah. It's like, dude, there's so many. And evolution is just its own individual. Here's a fun fact: property. Steven Spielberg once was circling this movie. Okay. I, mean, I can I can see something like this being an you early got Steven Spielberg supernatural events taking place in a rural area with a group of misfits banding together to save the day. So I guess there's some elements that it would have been different. The the, this is how you make it a Spielberg movie. They Obviously, would have all been kids. They would divorce, all been kids. Divorce. Yes. The lighting would be way different. God, it would have been so much like Stranger Things, though. Oh, mm -hmm. God. You know what? Don't even mm. say that. That might have been a better movie, though. Like Stop. a family discovers it. Hey, Wait, Richard Dreyfus. Guys, this is Ivan Reitman here. This is a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't think there are times and moments not where a bad I, movie. Yeah, there's some moments where I'm like, this is fun, especially at the end. I think I think the the funnest parts to me are like seeing all the new creatures. Like anytime they go back and you're like, oh, what's gonna, you know, what's what are we gonna see next? Like so, I think that's kind of the mm -hmm. funnest part about the whole movie. Yeah, like that the whole scene, the, the whole scene where they're in the mall is really cool. Like chasing the like dragon. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's all pretty. That's all pretty good stuff. It also feels so much like it's like the Ghostbusters catching Slimer. They <laughs> yeah. all got guns. Yeah. They all is. got guns. They're like making a mess. Yeah. 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 It's really quality like mall footage. Honestly, you spend like a good portion of time in there. But the only thing that's stupid is that at any point, like because the the dragon monster like goes to another part of the mall but where Sean William Scott and everybody is, it's like it's like very quiet. Nobody's panicking. And I'm like, everybody would be losing their shit because that word spread a lot faster. There's no way there's a quiet part of the mall. There's no quiet part of the mall with a dragon. The resolution's kind of dull, um, but I really like that's the, a fun scene. My two favorite scenes are first the – oh, actually, I like the end of the movie. But the scene at the lady's house where – they see the that yeah. really cute oh. creature. Oh wait, the the part of the movie where the little tiny green cute monster shows up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You're talking about that part. Yeah, that part. And then yeah. I think the golf course scene is really funny. And it's when Sean William Scott is describing maybe because I'm a golfer, but he when he's like, oh yeah, that dude got eaten last night on the 14th green. Oh, we found him in the sand trap. Whatever. Ah, made me laugh. Okay. Um, <laughs> How different would this movie be <clears throat> if Bill Murray played David Duchovny's part? Oh, um, it would be amazing. We would love it. Like, how good would he be in that role? He probably yeah. would have bought, uh, brought better performances out of everyone else. Yeah, of more, course. For sure. There's, you've heard of the Murray factor. Yeah. There's no Duchovny factor. No. Like, I think David Duchovny's likable, um, but I've seen him on late night shows. I don't know if he's got the... The chops. Doesn't he have a sex edition? Edition? Sex edition. <laughs> addiction. Blah. I don't know. I One of my favorite things up. about movies that take place in the early internet times is when they do like internet lingo. That seems like it's supposed to be like 
JPEGs. Yeah. There's a funny part where he's like, oh no, they took the JPEG files. And I was like, oh no, not the JPEG files. What are we going to do? Anything but the JPEGs. Listen, we went to the computer. They got the JPEGs. Um, my 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 favorite thing about uh, the thing that reminds me a lot of Ghostbusters is that um, Orlando uh, what's what's his name Orlando Jones what's his do you do we remember his name in the movie uh, we can find it um, uh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter Harry, anyway Harry the and fact, I <coughs> Winston the thing that, stance the, the the thing that really reminds me of Ghostbusters is that he is a teacher he's a professor he knows all that stuff but there's also so many scenes where he's like. It's literally like Peter and Ray where he's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but why don't you explain it to me? Right. And he kind of goes mm-hmm. back it happens and forth. over and over. His character goes back and forth from the character tropes of a, there's a little vague man and a little stance. And specifically when the bug goes up his ass. Yeah. Like I can see that playing out with Ray. Like someone's <laughs> got to go in there. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that having a ghost. <laughs> Yeah, what? that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I guarantee there was – like, do you ever think that maybe there was a Ghostbusters 3 script we never heard about that was just completely adapted to this? Because, like, I could yeah. see a ghost flying up Ray's butt. And yeah, then, and then mm-hmm. a giant, like, you know, a giant creature shows up in the third act just like, you know, Ghostbusters yeah. 1 and 2. It's like – Yeah. Yeah, it follows a lot of the same kind of – And just some regular I mean, it might not, it might not be, like, it. comparable – as far as like how well made the movie is or how funny it is. But if you just like look at the specific beats and some of the weird things that happen, it's very specifically like, Oh, that's in ghostbusters. That's in ghostbusters. Well, this I is think it's hard because like who, okay, this will be fun. Evolution, same movie, same script, same time period. Let's recast it. Okay. What would like, you're obviously you can't you're not going to get the chemistry of Bill and Dan and all that. But I'm thinking 2001. Even if you keep David Duchovny, like I as much as I like Julianne Moore, she what like there has to be somebody better in that role. Like a, uh, if they're going to have a female, maybe, maybe somebody. You could have Sarah Silverman, but as a funny character. Yeah, Sarah Silverman's funny, but in this movie, she does not play. A funny they don't character. give her any funny. Lines, She's in it for yeah. like two. I wonder who the SNL cast was in 2001. I'm going to look that up real quick. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head who all was like big and acting at that time. Mm-hmm. All right, right now I'm going to let, list off SNL cast members from 2001. And we'll give, okay, Jimmy Fallon. Thank God he's not in this movie. <sighs> uh, Tina Fey, Anna Gasteyer. I think Chris Kratan and Tracy Morgan would have been good in this movie. Just imagine funny, yeah. both of them. Yeah. I want Tracy Morgan <laughs> in a Ghostbusters movie. I've always wanted that. Yeah, I could. Yes, I can see <laughs> could that. Could you imagine that? Yeah. I'm not even going to try to do that. Um, Amy Poehler, Horatio Sands. I just feel what like. What about John Stewart? Yeah, maybe John Stewart. It, it feels like. <laughs> it's like it's definitely a com- like a sci-fi comedy, but they don't have like. Usually in a sci-fi comedy like Men in Black or Ghostbusters, you have a really strong comedic presence balanced by a straight man kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And this does like no none of the I guess Sean William Scott is supposed to be the comedic presence, but he he does not deliver. Mm-hmm. But he's not. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but uh good I'm for him. Tracy on that. Morgan down for sure. I think John Stewart, I'd cast him too. Tracy Morgan, John Stewart, David Spade. I'm looking at popular female actresses then. Cameron Diaz, Kirsten Dunst. I don't know. Mm. Gwyneth Paltrow. No. Sigourney Weaver. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. I like Put that. Put her in there. I, I guess the, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that I think maybe with some different casting, this movie could have... Because they're like... The, the plot kind of moves along and there, there's some good stuff and there's some cool gross creatures and some fun sequences, but some of the delivery just feels... A little off. Yeah. Dude, um, there was an episode of SNL that had Sean William Scott hosting and Sum 41 playing. <laughs> it must have been a big night. Sean William Scott is Sum 41 <laughs> in actor form. <laughs> um, let's talk about Dan Aykroyd as the governor in this movie. Okay. I don't... It feels cheap to say this, but I think he's the best part of the movie. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's... It's weird. It's like uh, it's. It feels like Dan Aykroyd. You just bring him in, and he kind of. 
it almost feels like you didn't have any kind of script or anything. You're just like, all right, Dan, this is what you're doing. And he just does it. There's the part um, where he sits down. What's he say? He's like, hold on. give me my spy glasses and a coffee. <laughs> no, I yeah, literally he's wrote, very, oh. that scene's very like, he also like, he's like, Hey, what are you keeping my seat warm for me? And I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. All right, bully. I'll take a pair of spy glasses and a hot chocolate. And a hot chocolate is what he <laughs> says. That's so funny. Um, Dan Aykroyd's great in this movie and it, it kind of bums me out because like he's so good at what he does and I completely agree that like you can't even write for him. You just got to let him do his thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of wish he was on the team. Like I said earlier, I wish it's he, like the same. Is he is he playing the same character from a. Uh, God, is it Tommy? Tommy Boy. Boy yeah. Yeah. Zelensky. <laughs> it's like he's saying playing yeah. the same. That's guy. his good. That's. That's Dan Eckerd's got that really good like side character, like not the most hard sell salesman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause that's Ooh. who I am. And that's who I care about. Yeah. 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 He's like, we were going to tell me aliens were taking over my city. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of parallels because when you're like the, the government agent or the, the military guys kind of play like the Walter Peck type role. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, they're trying to convince the governor that these scientists are shitheads. Yeah. That's what I wrote. I said, oh, look, a gang of misfits working against the military to save the world against supernatural slash otherworldly entities. It's like, oh, this is familiar. <laughs> but I like it. Uh, happy with it. What about what about the courtroom scene? Oh, there's a courtroom scene. Oh, the courtroom scene. <laughs> oh, <shit>. Yeah. <laughs> but there's like this weird scene where you find out that David Duchovny's character created some sort of like sickness oh. that was really gross. Yeah. 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 That was where the first somebody, 15 fart jokes came Somebody in. literally tries to murder him over it at yeah. some point in the movie. Like somebody pulls a gun out on him and tries to shoot him. Oh, and the way, yeah. right, the delivery of that whole, like Plot when we were line. watching that scene when, when he's being, uh, cross-examined and he's like uh well there was uh diarrhea and flatulence and like I, just the way he was delivering it was like erectile dysfunction yeah i was waiting for well, there's already so many holes in first avenue we didn't think anybody would notice <laughs> like it's very much like yeah and there is something funny about a smart ass like on the stand who just has no respect for authority um but we've seen it before <laughs> you know what else is funny diarrhea <laughs> Just as many diarrhea jokes as you More can get. More butt jokes? Yeah, yeah. Some butt stuff. Oh, there's a part where David Duchovny moons everybody and they cut to oh, Julianne Moore. And just, just loving it. Just she's glow. Like, she's thirsty. She's like, man, look at that <laughs> butt. Look at it. Smashed up against the window. There's nothing attractive it's about fine. that. It's a fine butt. I don't want to see any butt smashed against a window. <laughs> but you Ever. know what? He's like, fuck the man. It's so cool. <laughs> Um, Abby, what else you got? Uh, what some loose thoughts here. La, da, da, mm. Oh, I said at the one part in the cave when the, uh, the bad, I was like, oh no, the bad CGI effects are taking over all the good practical effects. Like when everything gets lit up, it's looking pretty cool down there, but then it looks like the fucking something from the prequels basically comes in and takes over. It's very yeah. Yeah, it get, graphics. Yeah. It gets all really, yeah. I mean, I, I still think some of those things look cool, but it yeah. doesn't look good. Yeah. I always I remember I remember when I was younger also being really uh maybe I don't know when I'm, maybe the first time I saw the movie being really bummed out at whenever you get to the end and you have the really big one I'm like well how come it doesn't look cool it doesn't look like it's just like a big mass of Vaginal. flesh like basically. why couldn't it have been like a monster yeah, why couldn't yeah. it have been like a, an alien that's or what something? Saying, if, cool if it him? evolved into that ape form, that's pretty fucking cool and very like dangerous. Yeah, why was that just a big old? I'm assuming it's because of the limitations of their graphics and <laughs> yeah. you know what imagination. Should, you know what it should have evolved into if they really wanted the uh, if they wanted this to be what I think they wanted it to be. It should have evolved into that giant smiley face with the three eyes. Dude, <laughs> I Which, drew a picture of that in my journal and I said they really wanted this to be a thing. They, they, and it did not become a like, thing. Like, I could see them like, we need something that pops, you know, like the Ghostbusters logo. Because, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, something people will associate, like a sign. But it's not like halfway <laughs> through the movie. They, I didn't even notice that. Like, no. you know, halfway through the movie, it's not like they formalized their group. And like put the three eye logo yeah. on their, their shoulder. And, no, no. But maybe they should have. It would have helped to have like some fo- <laughs> like a focus on it or a conversation should, at some so point. So you're saying 
you're saying, Craig, that they should have leaned into the Ghostbusters thing even more. <laughs> like Ivan Reitman, better. Ivan Reitman should have just said, fuck it. Give them a name. <laughs> call them the something, you know, we'll, we'll like give well, them they outfit, did. Give they did give, fucking, you know, in the animated series, they changed the name to um, the uh, the Alienators. Alienators. There's an anime. They the animated series for Evolution is called Alienators Evolution Continued because they realized they want this team to be like a team, like Captain Planet. They realized how much kids loved this movie. <laughs> I'm yeah. not. I'm not sure. I realized there was a cartoon. Yeah, there was a. Uh, well, there's one, our next bonus episode. Yeah, a one season animated series called Alienators. Uh, evolution continued and and it, they look like extreme ghostbusters is what they look like which really this movie is extreme ghostbusters that's kind of what this is like in the se- in the sense of it, it's kind of a late 90s early 2000s just got a raunchy vibe to it yeah yeah wow this looks so weird oh they yeah, also yeah. have like a little alien that's like their little sidekick <laughs> of course yeah. they it's, do they have like a Holy little shit. they have like a little green alien that has the three or no, it's a little yellow alien and he's got the three eyes and he's like, yeah, if you look up pictures, he's like hanging out with them. Well, because and then, you know, Slimer, because he uh-huh. slimes and then this because everything's butt jokes. His name's Farter. Third <laughs> butthole. Third butthole, man. <laughs> this is so weird. Craig, yeah. you were saying that there were toys. There's a toy line. Bandai did a toy line for the animated Stop. series. And um, I'm going to look it up right now. What what caught my eye is there's a couple vehicles. You know I like vehicles and play sets. Unfortunately. <laughs> is, there, is there a giant, uh, you know, blob? weird blob? <laughs> Dividing blob. Mm. Uh, do, you, do you get, is there an enema shooting toy? Sorry, this is the opening of the cartoon. Well, is that the theme song? Yeah. Play it. sucked oh we're on different pages i was like dude i'm about to sit down and slam this i was bummed i can't i can't find any toys so this is what all the episodes are up on youtube if you want to watch y'all listening this is what you got to search you got to search bandai alienator toys jesus christ and it'll be one of the first things that comes up um I, I was bummed. I like when theme songs, ex- like the Swamp Thing theme song, explains the plot of the Swamp Return of the Swamp Thing movie. I like when theme songs apl- explain the plot of the movie. Like I wish it was like David Duchovny discovered some stuff. They went to the <laughs> desert and things got rough. Julie and Moore just needed a kiss, but she fell on her face, and now we're all super pissed. Okay. okay. Um. No, didn't like I it, Jake. I found the toys. Okay. No, I'm, lo- I'm <laughs> looking at these toys. <laughs> Jake, we did that for you. Jake, we're waiting for you to contribute one, a verse. Okay. Um, I can't because I'm looking at how weird Scott, these Scott, he wants to fight the fire. <laughs> Sweat from his brow. He's going to perspire. Okay, we're done. Let's look at these toys. Um, and we'll oh, link, I'm looking at them now. Nice. We'll, we'll link to I this. I spelled it with a Z the first time. We'll we'll end on this because we're we're coming up at the end here. Tight. Um, so you've got your four main characters and Harry I mean, Block. These toys look pretty cool. What do you think, Ira? Mm, they're, they're, they're okay. It's not they're bad. weird. Not as cool yeah. as the uh, cartoon looks. <laughs> um, uh-huh. There's. Oh my god. I was not. Do you know what the do you know what the monster's name is? What? Gassy. Oh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Gassy? G. I wonder what it stands for something. It's G dot A dot S dot. It's like it's oh, like I see, a, I see. it's an acronym. Oh, boy. Uh, there's two motorcycles, but 
There's a selenium blaster mobile, which I have to get. I'm going to put it on my Ghostbuster shelf. <laughs> it's a, it's a Dude, fire Also, show. Taco Bell had toys. What? Oh. Taco Bell did a line of Alienators Evolution toys. Yeah. Dude, Dude it's all on whoa, eBay. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm finding out the name of what Gassy means. Genetically altered symbiotic stasis in evolution. Oh, my God. They put more <laughs> thought into that than any of the plot of evolution. Mm-hmm. Um, how many times can we look at scientists looking into a microscope and going, you won't believe this? Dude, I was like, oh, it's annihilation. They and keep then, splitting and refracting. And then they show like the cells like splitting and stuff. And I'm like, is that good? I know. <laughs> is that I know. Bad? <laughs> and then whenever they look away and are excited, I'm like, is this? They're like, we just experienced. Is this, did one of these figures come with slime? <laughs> I'm I'm going down a deep rabbit hole tonight. It says uh, there's yeah. It says um I can't tell what this is. It's, it says Harry Block's mutant catcher collectible set. Okay. Fire mutant into ca- I don't know if it's slime, but it, I guess it comes with like a trap. It comes with a trap. And uh, <laughs> oh, I know and, the and trap in this movie. Aliens. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you can buy the four like main characters uh, in packaging for thirty bucks on eBay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Looks like Craig is going to buy them tonight. Mm. We don't wait till Friday. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, so there was there was actually a good. So there were the four main characters and then each character also got a mutant catcher collectible set. Like a little um, it's almost like a deluxe figure. It's yeah. And then there was also some uh, like what did you say his name was Gassy or whatever. <laughs> He's got his own figure. There's a couple of aliens yeah. that have their Scopes. own figures. Yeah, it looks yeah. like there's two vehicles. Yeah, there's a there's a it's extensive set. It's a good little line. Yeah, dude, an unlikely team of scientists that there's are a, brought together. I'm not going to read the whole thing. There's a Game Boy game. It, here's the <coughs> wow. thing. I, I think like probably the studios like were like, <laughs> listen, I'm sure going into it, they were like, guys, Men in Black was huge. We've got the director of Ghostbusters basically remaking Ghostbusters. Yeah, they thought it was going to be and big. And kids are going to love it. We've got the guy from the 7-Up commercials. we got the guy from X-Files. This is going to be mm-hmm. huge. It's a home run. And then it wasn't. Made $90 million on an $80 million budget. There's like a clear pink version of Gassy that's very cool. That's the female <coughs> one? Stop it. <laughs> I'm typing in clear pink Gassy, and I'm kind of concerned about what I'm going to get. This has been a fun episode. Dude, yeah. it's just a bunch of nail polish. Yeah. Um, <sighs> well, listen, any, um, we're, we're, we're coming up here, uh, at 50 minutes and that's, we're going to have to get some food here. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, any other thoughts on, uh, evolution? God, Bef- let me look over. I'm sure now that evolution will be officially part of the YHS canon, we'll be talking about it, uh, more and more. Oh, I, the last part of the movie, there's like a fake commercial that feels so, so much like Ghostbusters <laughs> trying to reclaim that territory of like, if you hear strange noises in the night, but it's with head and shoulders. Yeah, that part made me laugh. That part almost felt like, like I saw somebody complaining on something. It was like, oh, this movie's just a head and shoulders commercial. I'm like, well, that's part of the joke. Like The, <laughs> the IMDb says that that was Jason Reitman's idea. The commercial at the end. What? Okay. Yeah. So the trivia said clearly the trivia brilliant. said that the fake commercial was Jason Reitman's idea. I am going to send some emails and I'm going to hopefully my goal now <laughs> We're gonna yeah. confirm that. I want to confirm that and I want Jason Reitman on the show specifically to talk about whether or not talk about evolution. that was yeah. <laughs> no, I wanted to no, not even the movie, just the commercial. Just the head and shoulders commercial. <laughs> Dude, what's going to happen is this would be the greatest thing. We finally get Jason Reitman on the show. We're like, hey, live here. Yes, have some. Director of Ghostbusters Afterlife, Jason you Reitman. Remember <laughs> were you remember your dad? <laughs> Did that head and shoulders um, When was the last time you watched the Evolution animated series? He's like, what? He's like, I knew this was a mistake. Um, there's not really a whole lot of other fun facts, just a lot of other people that were considered for the lead roles. Uh, so I don't know. I think I've said what I need to say about this movie. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It is fun. You'll have fun watching it. Yeah. It's definitely a fun watch. It'll, it'll make you want to watch other things too after watching it. Like better things. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters or Men in Black. Jake, uh, any final thoughts yeah. on this one? No, I just think everybody should watch it because it does like, it, it's not great, but it does have some fun stuff in it. So, mm-hmm. you know, just check it out. Yeah. 
check it out. Cool. Just check it out. Well, listen, thank you everybody for joining us uh, here on Yes, Have Some Podcast. We appreciate your patronage and we really are excited that we're able to do this Patreon free for April. So if this is your first time checking us out, uh, this might be the first time you've ever heard any of our stuff if you're just finding this on our main feed. So you can find us on social media at YHS Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find our Facebook page. We have a discussion group called Facebook Group Therapy, which is really fun. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be doing more of this. Watch Evolution. Let us know what you think. Come to Facebook Group Therapy and uh, we'll, we'll have a little evolution discussion thread after this episode yeah. drops. I like to think that there's some diehard evolution people out there that found us in this episode because they were searching for it. <laughs> They're fine. Uh, if, if we ever decided to start an evolution podcast, I think we maxed out everything we could. <laughs> Although we could do an episode where we review the Game Boy game. Yeah. True. Well, I guess we could watch the cartoons, buy the toys. Talk more about the figures. Yeah, I think there's room. There's enough content for another episode. We can the movie it only. The movie only gets like 35 minutes though. That's all. It's all. You that's can all we take. can do. Yeah. No, we're we're at 50 minutes. Hey. 50 minutes. It's wow, fine. that's pretty good, guys. We'll do a commentary. Okay, I do well, want to do a watch along with um with group therapy at some point. Not of this movie. <laughs> I'd like to actually like put a poll out for people to vote on what movie we should do for a watch along. We can do that. Okay. All right. Well, for Abigail Gardner and Jacob Walsh, my name is Craig Goldberg. Thank you for joining. Yes, have some podcast. We will see you next time. Bye, guys. Wash your hands. Yes. With head and shoulders. <laughs>